QMJHL fans, welcome back to our Monday night Facebook live sessions. Uh, today's interview, as you can see, is uh, Cataract uh, defenseman Jordan Tourigny. So, Jordan, thanks for uh, joining us on this Monday night. Thanks to you. Awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time. Obviously, in a busy season. Uh, for those who don't know how the format is right now, uh, being this uh, being on Facebook Live, you can throw some questions you can have for Jordan in the comments section at the bottom, and we'll pull some up on screen and ask them during our live conversation. So for anyone watching online, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments, and we'll be sure to get to them. Uh, so Jordan, obviously, uh, you had a very uh, successful first season in the queue last year. So as a rookie, uh, obviously, you top that season lifting the president's cup so just a general question to get the ball rolling how was uh how was that season maybe what uh what was your fondest memory from that whole cup run yeah i think uh it was the best season i could ask for being a 16 years old young player first year being with a great uh, great player like maverick borg xavier borgo i think they were their leaders i could just follow them and do the same thing as them and i think uh, winning the president cup going at the memo i think uh it was awesome. Great experience for uh, my future years. Obviously, coming into your rookie season, you have a lot of things you, you that are unexpected or that you had never lived before. Um, but obviously, walking into that room for the first time, I mean, did you get that sense or that feeling that, you know, maybe that group was special and could go all the way? Oh, yeah, 100%. I think uh, Borgo, Borg, uh, uh, Baldwin, I think they all played together since 16, so I know that they had a great relationship. And uh, with all the players that we added in our team, I think uh, I knew it that uh, we could uh, do big things. What were some of those signs that you saw coming in? I mean, was it just obviously the depth that you guys had? Did you Was it the, the, the group that was very tight-knit, the leadership coming from behind the bench? What were some of the elements that sort of stuck out? Yeah, I think the depth, uh, the relationship we all had together, I think uh, it was awesome. Also, our coach, Daniel Renault, had uh, many experience in the uh, President Cup and going far in a uh, playoff game. So I think all of those things together, I think it was the best thing that we could have. And Daniel Renault, obviously, for, for people who are following that, they know, came back to show win again uh, after having a, a, a very good season with Valdor. Uh, did that mentality change? I mean, obviously, you're coming into a new room. You got an, an experienced coach coming in. I mean, did, did the group sort of change its mentality, seeing that Dan had come back to them? Yeah, 100%. I think Dan, uh, he just showed us the way. He, he knew what he what we needed to do since day one. He had a progress. He he knew that like results were coming. I know during season, it was hard. Borgo, Borg, there was not always playing. So I think he knew what he, what he was doing, and uh, that's why we won the President Cup. What about on a personal level? I mean, from looking back now that you're in your year year two, what are some of the things you learned, or that you know Daniel Renault showed you during that first year that you sort of that that stuck to you? Uh, I think like since day one, he had confidence in me, so like he was playing me power play PK, so that helped me a lot. I think that's where my confidence come from this year. I think if last year I wasn't playing uh, as as minute I played last year, it would be hard on my confidence. But uh, Daniel Renault, all the coaching staff had confidence in me, and that's the the thing that helped me the most. What about practice wise? Obviously, you mentioned you know uh, Bourg and Bourgo who were on that team. You get to face off against them in practice every day. Do you feel like some of those are some of the things that made you a better player throughout the year? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, I could. Uh, I saw them work hard every day. I think uh, they were always in the gym, always taking care of their body. So I was doing the same thing on the ice. They was always giving their hundred percent. So uh, I was. I needed to do the same thing as them. So that's the main thing. That's why I I got better. I think so. And you came in as a rookie last year, so obviously the seasons before that were a little bit harder because of COVID and coming through the U18 AAA ranks. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I don't think you played U18 AAA because of the COVID, right? Yeah, 100%. I just practiced with my team. And I mean, how was that transition? You're one of those rare guys who, you know, doesn't play U18 AAA at all. Then his rookie season jumps straight into the QMJHL. I mean, was that, you know, sort of a, a sh were you shell shocked? Were you, you know, amazed by the speed of the game? What were some of the things that stood out to you? Yeah, the speed it was a big difference from Bam Tam to uh, QMJHL, I think. Uh, but like, I got used to it because I practiced with the uh, media AAA team. So, I got used to it. My brother like talked to me, got me prepared. My family, everybody that was surrounding me, they 
they made sure that was I was prepared for the next step, and I think uh, they they did a great job. And now you mentioned uh, your brother. Your brother's Miguel Tourigny, who played in the QMJHL uh, up till last year, actually. Um, you guys are close in age. I believe there's only a two year gap. Is that All right? right? Years, yeah. Three years. And I mean, growing up, I mean, you obviously must have have learned a lot of things from him and playing against him, you know, and with him probably in a few, uh, a few uh, chances here and there. I mean, what are some of the things that you know sort of had you prepared for the QMJHL without ever you know hitting the ice? How did Miguel help you in that way? I think um, Miguel, uh, I know, like he had tough, uh, like his rel was pretty tough. He was a small guy, but he was telling him that he wouldn't, he wouldn't make it since he was small. So I think when I was looking at him, I, he was just never giving up and he was always working as hard as he can and giving his 150%. And I think when I was looking at him, I could just model my game and model my uh, work ethic at him. And that's the thing that helped me. And you're mentioning some of those things obviously are mostly on ice, but I mean, what about off the ice? What are some of the pointers or the tips he had given you for, for life in the QMJHL? Obviously, you're moving away from home. You have to live with a billet family, you know, get involved in the community, all that. What are some of the things that, you know, you feel Miguel had you prepared for? Uh, yeah, the billet thing, I think uh, I was in the billet, uh, Major Triple A, so I was kind of used to it. But uh, outside the rink, like... Uh, I knew he was professional, always taking care of his body. He was telling me like, when you ha- when you ha- need when you have time to rest, rest. Take take this time to take care of your body because the season is pretty long and uh, you'll be tired uh, after Christmas if you don't take care of yourself. Definitely some good good tricks so that you can oh, learn yeah. from him. Uh, and obviously, we're talking about hockey wise and all that. Uh, you guys obviously uh, coming into the queue, you have to learn how to balance more school and hockey work and all that. So I just wanted to take the time for you to maybe to bring up uh, what are you studying in and what are some of the subjects that you you like the most about school? Uh, this year, I'm doing a grade 12. I think okay. it's uh, yeah, on my computer uh, online. So it's uh, pretty easy. I'm doing it at uh, the arena and I have uh, like uh, international business. I have literacy courses and I have it's pretty easy, I think. So that's I good. Uh, I made a good choice doing a uh, great twelve. And what if, obviously, I mean, this is your NHL draft year, so it's a weird question to ask. But I mean, what if you were not, not a hockey player in your future? Did you ever envision doing something else? No, no, I never think about it. I think uh, we have a family farm, so that would be my easy answer: take the family farm. But I never really thought of uh, an uh, option uh, B. So I'm just focusing on hockey and uh, hoping for best. Uh, family farm might be the b- best time to plug them. What do you guys grow? What's uh, what's the family um, like? We have a big uh, milk uh, cow farm, yeah. Nice, nice. And you grew up in that your whole life? Yep, yep. Nice, nice. You spend uh, your off-seasons working out on the farm, I guess? Yeah, when half time, uh, weekends, I get up early and help my dad. Any any discipline factors you feel like you got from that? I'm sure your dad's a very rigorous person. Oh, yeah, I think like uh, getting up fifth five thirty and uh, working out, uh, going to the farm after rest and um, go train. I think that's the thing I learned the most from my on my farm. Definitely, definitely. Now, you mentioned obviously last year was your rookie year. You obviously ended up uh, lifting the President's Cup. Uh, you coming into your second year, you mentioned those guys, Bourgo, Bourg, they're all gone. Uh, what was that whole ambiance like, you know, coming into year two? Obviously, the goals must be a little bit different for the team. Yeah, it was the same thing. I think last year with Bur- Burgo, Nado, uh, they were the leaders. I was just there following them and doing the same thing as them. I think this year it's my turn to show the new people, new guys in the league to show them what to do, how to take care of their body. So it's really different. We're young, we're less experienced, but I think uh, we have a good team that uh, can win big games and uh, compete each day, each night. And obviously you're still 17 years old, but you're, you're already a veteran in this, in, in this league. Um, what are some of those things that you, you know, you can show those kids and, you know, take them under their wing. Obviously you've gone to, to the finals, you've won it. I mean, what are some of those elements that you're sharing nowadays? I think uh, it's the same thing I learned from Burke and Burgo. They had an uh, NHL camp, so they, they, they knew what they were doing in, uh, I think uh, Bork, if, if he was uh, playing as well as he did at the memo at the end of the playoff, I think the way he was taking care of his body, always in the gym, uh, getting his uh, bat, uh, ice bat, I think that's all things that I show the younger play- people to do. And you must be, obviously, from, from hearing what you're saying, you're taking care of your body very, very well nowadays, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, I, I think I saw him do, and I'm trying to do the same thing. 
Now, obviously, from winning the President Cup, you guys get to participate in the Memorial Cup. That tournament was obviously in St. John in our, our very own QMJHL backyard. Uh, how was that whole experience for you? I'm sure you're getting there against the, get to play against the top teams in the, in the nation and you sort of compare yourselves and see where you're at. How was that whole experience for you? Oh, that was awesome. I think playing against that O and the Dub, I think that's the, a, a thing that the 16 years old don't do often. I think yeah, that's uh, my best year I could ask for. And uh, it's uh, pretty good to compare myself like to uh, other people from uh, not uh, like the QMJHL, but the OHL and the WHL. It was awesome. And you played against some big names who are now playing some of them in the National Hockey League. I mean, what uh, any any players stand out that you played against that you were like, wow, man, this guy's the real deal? Oh, yeah, Mason Tavish, I think he was the big guy there. He was everything like he was doing. It was awesome on the ice of the ice. He was uh, tough to play against. And uh, that was awesome. And and how how about you, like seeing Bogo and Book and all that play pro hockey nowadays? I mean, is it weird for you just knowing that they were in your own room, you know, just last year? Yeah, I think, yeah, I can. I don't realize every day. I think it's uh, maybe it'll be my turn in a couple of years, and I hope so. And now we brought up uh, your brother uh, before, Miguel. He would have been in his 20-year-old season this year. Obviously, we, we don't expect him back in the QMJHL nowadays. Uh, he's in Slovakia now, is that correct? Yep. And how's his season been doing? I mean, have you guys been keeping in touch? Uh, how often do you guys talk? Uh, we talk every day. I think when we wake up, uh, he's uh, eating. So we are always talking about our game. I think uh, when he arrived there, he it was a little bit hard. I think he got used to it now. It's like no French, almost a little bit English. So it was hard at the beginning, but now it's going uh, pretty well for him. Now do you get to, you understand how the Europeans feel a little bit more when they show up in Shawinigan and can't speak French, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's cool that's cool has he been following your your i was gonna say your career but has he been following your season uh miguel is he is he tuning in yes uh before sleep he's watching my game sometimes he get up the next morning and he watch it uh during breakfast so i think that's awesome to see my brother following my my games uh even if he's uh, far away and I know, obviously, you guys said you're close in age growing up. I mean, were there some some rivalries? I mean, do you feel like, you know, playing against them outside or on, on the outdoor rinks? I mean, did that sort of turn you into the player you are today? Obviously, you're both defensemen, so. Oh, yeah, I think uh, when we were playing at our house, there was always someone, something going bad. I think we're both players that love to win and uh, hates, hates to lose. So I think uh, that's why this uh, today, like we are people that uh, will do everything to win and uh, we hate when we lose. You feel that's the biggest thing you took from your brother, the competitive uh, spirit? Oh, yeah, I think so. Awesome, awesome. Now, we brought it up earlier. This is your NHL draft year. So coming in, I know your, your team objectives were a little different after winning the President Cup. But what about on a personal level? Had you fixed certain objectives for your draft year? I think try to get better, try to be a 200 defenseman. I think be real, reliable on uh, every situation so my coach can be put, uh, like, if we need a goal, I can be on the ice. If we need to, to like, to protect a goal at the end of the game, I think I want to be the guy who's on the ice, and I think that's when I need to be better for to, to go at the next step. And obviously your brother Miguel went through the draft process twice. I don't think he was drafted in his draft year. It was only the, the year after, right? Yep. I mean, is it something that you've spoken about with them i mean what if what if you don't get drafted this year is it the end of the world or do you know that there's another avenue because of your brother yeah i think i saw my brother he was it was pretty hard for him i know but uh i think like it's not over he got drafted as his third year so that's if i don't get drafted this year i think it's not the end of the world I'll just uh work hard work harder and uh, try to get drafted next year and obviously you mentioned earlier you take care of your body work hard as much as you can trying to turn into a complete player but i mean how is that pressure i mean do you, is it something that personally you block out and don't think about or do you use it as motivation uh, i think i try to block out some some things actually i try like not think too hard about draft year and uh like can't sleep it's uh like yeah when uh, the b note uh went out i think i use that to like a motivation to try to get the better note uh, maybe try to get a and uh and uh yeah draft uh, earlier so you're mentioning that uh, that b prospect ranking that came out earlier so obviously you did turn some heads some heads uh, since then because today they put the announcement out for the the two the top prospects game and you were invited so how was that uh, how was that news 
that was awesome i wasn't even thinking about it i just got the news from my agent he texted me and uh, when i saw the 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 insta chl uh, top prospect ranking it was it was awesome like all my teammates was just saying good job jordan and it was awesome yeah so you feel they're going to cheer you on when that game hits i think it's january 25th right yeah yeah exactly i think uh, they will be there cheering for me and obviously this is in vancouver so is that your first time out west uh yeah i think yeah i think so nice nice so speaking of going out west uh we can't really ignore the fact that you've also represented canada on the international scene so you played that uh, u17s last year yeah. and you followed that up in the summer with the ivan linka tournament where you guys took home uh, the big prize how was that whole experience i think uh it was an awesome experience i think with that president cup memory cup and uh, that u18 i think it's just just the uh, the best year I could ask, and uh, like playing with the best player of my age of, uh, of my country, I think it's a good way to compare myself and to see uh, where where I was where I was with them. And I think uh, I didn't train a lot, but the experience I got from there was uh, I think it's better. What about when you showed up there for the competition? Any one guy that sort of stand out, and you were like, "Wow, this guy's with another level." Oh yeah, Brendan Jagger. I think yeah, we all know him. He's a great player. He's an overall guy, and he's a really kind person. And on the ice, he's just awesome. And when you show up to those uh, those uh, tournaments, obviously you're all the you know you're all pretty much some of the best players coming in from your teams. Did you yourself have to adapt to a new role? Did they ask you to play more of a you know defensive shutdown guy or play your offensive game? How how did that work out? No, I think they saw how I played uh, last year. So what they just let me go and do do my thing. I think that's what they did with probably everybody. So that was pretty awesome. So I could just do what I, I'm best to and uh, do what I, whatever I want. And you mentioned short summer. Obviously, you go all the way to the President Cup, Memorial Cup. You play the Halinka Gretzky tournament. How did that affect your whole workout uh, program during last summer? Oh, I didn't train a lot. I think uh, after my Memorial Cup, I tried to rest the most of it to be prepared for uh, U18. But... I think I trained three weeks max, but uh, I think the experience was uh, maybe the best thing for me to, for this year. And uh, when the Caesar is uh, done this year, I'll train uh, all summer long to get to gain weight and uh, train really hard. Is that one of your main objectives? You know, obviously you you mentioned earlier being you know a two hundred foot complete player, but I mean, is adding weight something you think of throughout the season? Or are you keeping that more for for next summer? Uh, I try like don't lose weight, maybe keep the same uh, weight i am on and this summer i uh, really focus on gaining weight and lifting weight uh, to get ready for the next step nice nice uh, any expectations uh, going into the nhl draft year have you began talking to, to any nhl teams at all yeah i, I received a couple uh questionnaire in uh, a couple of interview uh one-on-one -on -one, so i think uh i try to maybe focus on hockey and not on the draft but it's pretty hard but yeah that's that's about, that's about it for sure. Any any curveballs you've gotten already or some weird questions where like, whoa, where, where, what are they trying to figure out here? Yeah, a couple of times I needed to uh, take a couple of minutes to uh, analyze the question. But I think uh, at the end of the day, it's all almost all the same question. So I get pretty used to it. We don't want you to name the team. But what's one of the weird questions you've gotten? Uh, if I am at a red light, do I press on the gas to like get in front of the first car or just go behind the car i think that's was the question that was oh yeah why why do they want to know that <laughs> you're sort of trying to figure out if you're a leader a follower or if you're just yeah. gonna burn a red light <laughs> yeah that's i think that's that was the the what they wanted to know so we've got our first question in the comments here jordan so i'm gonna just pull it up here on the screen so someone is asking uh yamamoto is asking where is jordan from so i know we could tell from the qmjhl stats page but uh you want to answer that where'd you uh, where were you born and raised uh yeah i'm born and raised in victoriaville not from not far from victoriaville only one uh from shawangan so i'm pretty close from home only one hour of uh, drive so uh, yeah i'm pretty lucky and growing up in victoriaville were you a fan of the the tig at all yes yes uh, every time they were playing i was going there with my friends and uh yeah, that's that. I was pretty fan of them. And who was your 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 favorite player growing up? Who who was your your idol or the guy you were looking up to? Uh, I think when I was a forward, because I was a forward when I was uh, young, I, it was uh, Sidney Crosby. I think that's was the player I was looking for. 
Okay. And uh, since Bantam, I'm a defenseman, so I I try to look up to Cal McCarr. I think he's one of the he's the best defenseman in the NHL. For sure. And obviously you mentioned Makar, so I'm sure you're trying to model your game after his, which is a definitely a great reference. But I mean, have you had any NHL comparables yourself? Are people comparing you to certain NHLers already? Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe yes. I just don't focus on that and try to uh, just try to compare myself to Cal Makar and uh, watch him do uh, what he does on the ice and try to do the same thing as, as him. Are you a big video guy? Do you rewatch your own games or watch a lot of NHL games? Yeah, I think after a game the next morning I receive my own shift. So I, when I before I I uh, I eat breakfast, I just watch uh, my shift in my, in my bed and uh, watch what I could do better and what I did uh, pretty good. And I mean, do you ever have someone else you know tune in? Obviously, I'm sure you sit down with some of your coaches. But I mean, analyzing your own video, you can see what you've done right, wrong, done wrong. But I mean, ha have you watched that video with your coaches? Do you guys sit down during the, throughout the year? Uh yeah, my coach he does he does uh, a lot of videos. So after uh, maybe uh, each weekend uh, we have a video uh, meeting uh, one on one, and uh, we try to get better on uh, those videos and watch uh, what uh, what uh, what I needed to do best. And obviously, there's a fine line about learning on video and learning through experience. I mean, sometimes you see the pros just grab the iPad as soon as they get back to the bench. Me personally, I love to see them, you know, just go back out, ditch the iPad and just live and learn through your own mistakes. But you personally, do you feel like you learn more through playing time or through through watching yourself? I think playing time. I think when I go on the ice, I know I did a bad play. I just look up on the iPad and uh, and uh, ask my coach what I could have done better. So uh, the next time it happened, I, I know what to do. Nice, nice. So uh, we have a few minutes left. So Jordan, I just want to ask some questions that people get to know you a little bit better. So we're just going to run through a few quick hits in here, here and there. Uh, so the first general question, obviously, being a defenseman, you're still trying to score some goals. Who's one of the most uh, toughest goalies to beat in the QMJHL right now? Oh, um, I'll say Nathan Darvaux from uh, Victor. I think he's a small goalie, but he's pretty quick. And uh, I think he's... Uh, the one that sees all the pucks from the blue line, so it's pretty hard. What about a forward? Who's the toughest guy to shut down when he's coming down? Uh, I'll say um, Nathan Gaucher from the Quebec Rampers. I think he's a big guy. He's tough to play against. So I know we had a big, re re like, uh, when we played last year against him, it was, uh, like, rough, uh, him and me. So I think it's uh, the guy that's pretty hard. Rough but intense, let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about on your own team? Who's the toughest guy you get to face off against this year? Uh, I think William Veyet. I think uh, he's the guy who's give he give a uh, hundred percent every day. So I think uh, in practice he's uh, always wanting to win. So that's why it's pretty hard. Uh, what else could we ask you? What about music wise? What gets you going? What do you listen to before a game? Oh, before a game it would be a uh, rap, hundred percent rap. Uh, if not. Uh, when I go to the practice, it's country, always country, and uh, that's I'm a big guy of uh, country music. What about one song that gets you going? If you had to choose one, uh, before game or yeah, whatever. If you had to pick one song out of your, I was gonna say iPod, but that would give away my age on your iPhone that you know gets <laughs> you going, or that you can throw the tunes and get the boys fired up. Uh, I think it would be all of the lights. Okay. All the lights, yeah, I think that's the song that's getting me going in the room. Good, good old classic tunes. Who's yeah. the locker room DJ there in Show Winnigan? Uh, William Vayet. Definitely. Captain yeah. gets the DJ also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about the, I was going to say classroom clown, but who's the, who's the guy who keeps the locker room loose? Uh, he's a new guy from this year, Eli Bayarjon. I think he's the guy that's always fooling around, having fun with our teammates. I think he's, he's the guy that always has a smile on his face and uh, he brings joys in the room. Okay. Uh, what else could we uh, could we ask you that people don't know? What about your favorite trip destination? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, I think I would go to Dubai. I think uh, when I see the big cars there, police cars, I think uh, only uh, expensive uh, trip. Uh, I would go there. Definitely. If it's round trip, you might as well pick a pick a hot spot, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about your favorite NHL team growing up? I know you mentioned you were a Crosby fan. Were you also a Pittsburgh fan? Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, seeing Malkin, Crosby, Latang all playing together, I think uh, I was a huge fan of them. But now I think it's more uh, Colorado Avalanche seeing Cal McCarr play. You ever meet an NHLer, someone that you know left you starstruck? Uh, I think when I was ten years old, I went to Edmonton and I saw Connor McDavid practice in the, 
on the ice. I think it was awesome. His speed, I could see it in reality. It was awesome. Definitely, definitely for sure. Must be, uh, must be pretty crazy to see up close. Nice, nice. What about cheat meal? If you could have one cheat meal for the rest of your life, what would you go for? I would go for pizza. I think it's classic pizza, pizza poutine. I think both together, there's just the cheat meal I love to eat. What about community wise in Shawinigan? What's your favorite restaurant? Uh, the Glob. I think it's uh, the good pasta, good steak, ribs. I think that's uh, the the that's the place I go to eat uh, often. I was gonna say a little heavy for a pregame, but maybe a post game. That sounds oh, good. Yeah, post game, it's awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, Jordan, that's all we needed from you today. So obviously, like I mentioned earlier, thanks for taking the time for doing this. Uh, for anyone who's watching online, Jordan's going to move to uh, the LAGMQ French Facebook page now to uh, have the same type of interview, but in French. So if you guys want to tag along for that, you're more than welcome. And like I said earlier, Jordan, best of luck uh, rest of the season. Best of luck in your draft year. And thanks again for doing this. Thanks to you. Awesome. Take care, man. Take care.